Hi, in this video, we are going to be learning about pulse and blood pressure. So as I said before, the normal adult pulse is going to be somewhere between 60 and 80 beats per minute. And so we're going to go with the average of 72. If, if your heart was beating 60 times a minute, that means you would be having one beat per second. But at a heart rate of 72, it's about eight tenths of for every cardiac cycle. And remember that the heart has both parasympathetic and sympathetic innervation. And so that's going to introduce some new terminology. So the sympathetic stimulation of the SA node or the AV node or the ventricles can speed up the heart rate. And so it speeds up the timing of the heart, which is considered a chronotropic effect. Chronos meaning time. And so a positive chronotropic effect is when the heart rate goes up. And that's what sympathetic nervous stimulation of the heart does. In contrast to that, parasympathetic stimulation to either the sinoatrial node or the atrioventricular node will decrease the heart rate. So it has a negative chronotropic effect. And so the heart muscle itself sets whether or not it's going to contract, but the sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation, as well as drugs that we give, which affect sympathetic or parasympathetic impulse delivery, that changes the heart rate. Now there is a different type of effect known as the inotropic effect, and that has to do with force of contraction. Like for instance, I can be sitting here doing flexing of my elbow. And yes, technically I'm exercising. But doing this is a lot different than doing this or doing this like where we have some oomph behind it, okay? And so that's an inotropic effect. And sympathetic stimulation to the heart muscle can cause increases in the force of contraction, thereby generating more pressure in the blood that's exiting the ventricle. And this is considered a positive inotropic effect. Now, the good news is there is no negative inotropic effect. So parasympathetic innervation on stimulation cannot cause the heart to work in a weaker state. So understanding that the heart contracting affects the blood pressure, what is blood pressure? Well, blood pressure is simply a measurement of the outward pressure of the blood against the blood vessel walls. And it can be affected by a couple of different things. The first thing is blood volume leading the heart. And so this is showing three different tubes, which at first glance look at the same size. So think of this as a little experiment that you can do with your faucet or a hose. If you turn the water on full pressure, full flow, flow, then you know you can get a really strong stream and you can wash the dirt off your driveway, but please don't do that, use a broom. Okay. If on the other hand, you were to partially block the flow, then you would have a weaker stream and it would have less pressure. And then if you would to almost all block it, you would just have a dribble, okay? So this one, you wouldn't mind getting on your cat and your dog, and this one, you would never want to spray on your pet. So blood volume exiting the heart has a lot to do with blood pressure. A second factor has to do with resistance of the walls of the blood vessels, because remember, the blood is coming out in spurts. Here's a quarter cup, here's a quarter cup. And so there's two different components. The first is the blood vessel diameter itself. If the resting diameter is like this, that is going to have a lower pressure than if there's sympathetic stimulation causing the diameter to be much smaller, that will have a higher blood pressure. And the other factor has to do with the stiffness. And this is where our elastic arteries come into play because then when blood exits the heart to them, they will expand. If the blood vessels coming out of, if the, say for instance, your aorta is stiff because it has atherosclerosis all over it, then 
It cannot take advantage of the elasticity in the wall, and then you are going to have a higher blood pressure. So when we are talking about blood pressure, we are talking about two numbers written over each other like a fraction. And this is how you need to write blood pressure numbers. The first number is always the higher number, the bigger number, because it represents how much pressure is being generated when the ventricular systole is occurring, during the oof and the blood's coming out. This is how much oomph there is behind the blood, taking those three factors into consideration. And then the lower number is representing how much pressure still is in that vessel when the heart is in diastole. And so that's representing, well, if, the, if there was stuff that prevented the blood from leaving that blood vessel, um, then it would have a higher pressure. And so we say the first number is the systolic blood pressure and the lower number is the diastolic blood pressure. So I won't confuse you with numerator and denominator, but systolic blood pressure over diastolic blood pressure. And the normal adult blood pressures, people like to say 120 over 80, when in fact it's less than 120 systolic and less than 80 diastolic. If you have a systolic blood pressure of 140 and above, by definition, you have high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. So if I ask you what hypertension is, don't tell me it's high blood pressure, give me numbers. Now, if you have a diastolic pressure of 90 or higher, you also have high blood pressure. You do not need both of them to be above their magic numbers. You only need the systolic or the diastolic. Now, granted, most people with hypertension are gonna have both numbers above our breakdown. So what does that mean for that 120 to 140 and that 80 to 90? Well, this is the zone known as pre-hypertension. And this is where lifestyle factors will make a difference as I will show on a next slide. Now, for young adults, um, oftentimes um, we are dropping the levels for hypertension lower than 140 over 90, because in your 20s, you should never be having blood pressures of 140 over 90. Part of the reason I talk about this is because we did not used to have hypertension in students in colleges. You used to not develop hypertension until you're in your 40s, your 50s, or your 60s. But now we know that at least 10% of our college age students, and I'm not talking about the 40 year olds going back, I'm talking about the teens and early 20 kids, at least 10% of them have high blood pressure that they're not doing anything about because they think I'm in my 20s, there's nothing wrong with me. And I want you to realize there are no symptoms that go from having high blood pressure for like at least 10 years. And all that time for those 10 years, you are having organ damage to your kidneys, to your brain, to your heart, to all the organs in your body. Um, and it can affect your sex life. So if nothing else, go see the doctor if you have these high readings and get it treated at a young age. So when you have hypertension, that means the heart has to work a lot harder to pump the blood, which means you will get more heart muscle. And so if you look at this cross section of the heart, you clearly can see that this left ventricle, the heart muscle is at least twice the normal thickness and at least a very small opening for blood to enter because the heart has to work so hard to get the blood out. And so the amount of blood that's leaving the heart with every contraction has plummeted. And so you can see how this person is going to have real difficulties with a normal lifestyle. So by the time your parents or grandparents are in their 60s, we know that right around 50 to 60% of Americans will have high blood pressure. Um, so who is at risk for high blood pressure? Well, smoking. So if you smoke, quit, okay? 
people with high fat intakes, so and that includes lard and butter. Salt intake, if you are eating out, if you're eating frozen or canned foods, those are salt bombs, okay? So you need to do more of your own cooking. Way too much salt in pre-packaged food. If you're overweight because your heart is having to work harder, if you have a sedentary lifestyle, if you are in a stressful situation, not that students are ever in stress, especially during time of sleep, um, or if ethnic background is of a black person because you have different genes, it also makes you a lot more susceptible to the influences of salt. So you can even have a normal salt intake. Family history is important and alcohol consumption. So what are the consequences of having untreated high blood pressure, heart attacks, heart failure, strokes, kidney failure, hardening of the arteries, blindness, amputation, and impotence. Like I said, it can affect your sex life. So let's all get our blood pressures checked as soon as possible. And if they are elevated, go see your primary care person. This is just a fact sheet here and pause the video and take a chance, take a moment to read this and educate yourself and have this conversation with your parents, especially if you love your parents and your grandparents, make sure that they are having their blood pressures treated because a lot of people, especially at times of financial hardship will quit taking their meds because they don't have any symptoms. Well, the first symptom you could have is your stroke or your heart attack leading to death. That's not a good first symptom. Or you could end up with heart surgery, which is like, okay. So, you know, this is kind of what a surgical type people do during Easter with our peaks thing. But I will leave you at that and I will see you again soon. Thank you for all your hard work. We really appreciate it.